morning, everyone. Uh, recently, I've been talking a lot about the benefits of oat bran, and several of you in response have asked me how exactly I make my oat bran. And uh, since I make it about three times a week, I've pretty much perfected the science to it, at least for how I like to make it. Uh, so let's get started. Here we have the ingredients laid out. Um, that's one cup of almond milk, unsweetened. That's one third cup of oat bran, or if you have a food scale, that's 31 grams. Um, just the last bit of my wheat germ, some banana, and then the, those back there are my chosen toppings for today. So, uh, to start out, let's put the oat bran in a saucepan with the almond milk. And we're going to turn that on medium heat. There you go. And I like to add a little bit of sweetener. That's totally optional. Sorry if this is camera work is making you sick. I kind of have to use two hands to open the package. And we're going to stir that up. All right. And while that works, I'm going to mash this uh, banana. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. This should be interesting. If only Margot could help me. It doesn't have to be perfect because uh, it's going to get all mushed up in the oat bran eventually. All right, we're going to say that's good. I'll lick the fork. But you can't see me. But. All right, and we're going to nuke this for about 30 seconds. And I have a handy dandy 30 second button. And while that's working, um, this is the stage when I go ahead and add um, any protein powder or cocoa powder, or in this case, I'm adding wheat germ. Just any kind of dry ingredient that you want to make sure gets well incorporated. There you go. You can hear the banana getting nice and hot in there. Beep. All right. And this is what it should look like. Kind of uh, mushy, wet, and uh, loses a little bit of its volume. Uh, I actually learned this trick from Chocolate Covered Katie. I think she calls this her banana brulee method. So we're going to dump that in. Mush, 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 mush. And you get the idea. You just want to make sure that it gets well incorporated into the other ingredients. And we're just going to let that cook for a couple minutes. And uh, rather than have you watch this uh, pot of oat bran cook, I'm going to pause it for a second. Hello, and we are back. Uh, this is about seven minutes later. Uh, as you can see, our oat bran has thickened up quite a bit. Uh, it's pretty pasty right now and sticky and gluey, uh, which is perfectly tasty just like this. You could pour it out of the pot and eat it as is. But I like to add about a half a cup of water, which I have forgotten to prepare for this. So I'm just going to go over to the sink and add a bit. This is the same um, same measuring cup that I used for the almond milk, which is why it's cloudy. It's not that I just have dirty dishes. And I just mix that in. Oops, I just got a little bit making a mess, but you know, the usual. Anyway, um, and this to me, I really like the texture that this creates. When you add that extra half cup, you let this cook down. Um, it increases the volume a little bit and just makes it a, a nice soft texture. Uh, if you want to get technical, this is 
kind of uh, playing off the colloidal sus suspension property of starches, but whatever, we're not going to get into that. Um, and so we're just going to let this cook down again, and I'll be back. And welcome back. This is about two to three minutes after adding that half cup of water. And as you can see, it's thickened up quite a bit. I like to achieve a kind of, uh, I don't know, I guess you would say a, a pudding-like texture. It's pretty thick. Um, that's what it looks like when you coat the, the back of the spatula. Um, and I can't really pour the oat bran into the bowl with one hand, so I'm going to take another quick break, and then we can get onto the toppings portion. All right, now we've got the oat bran into the bowl, and as you can see, it continues to thicken up as it cools. Um, and for the toppings, really, it's up, totally up to you. Uh, I generally like to include some kind of fat, so that's usually nuts or nut butter. Today I am using uh, cocoa roasted almonds. They're by a company, I think it's Emerald Nuts. I've talked about them before. They're pretty delicious. So I'll just put those on. And you know me, I'm a, I've always got an eye for presentation, so I like to space them evenly. Uh, and then I usually add some kind of fruit, sometimes dried, sometimes fresh. Berries are obviously a great pick, but today I'm using just dried cranberries. They add nice color, and of course they have valuable nutrients and fiber. Um, and finally, I add a little bit of unsweetened shredded coconut. And we all know how I feel about coconut. It's just magical. And I think my eyes were a little bit bigger than my stomach when I was portioning out these ingredients. I don't think I'm going to use that at all. Oh, look who's joined us. Hi, that's Margo, everybody. Live in action. But anyway, uh, that is pretty much the conclusion of this tutorial. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And have a great weekend.